The pitch from Acevedo. A drag feet to right field. Down the line. The Mariners win this game 2-1. The dream lives. They're going to the playoffs. One more from Gant. There you go. Left field. We got a tie ball. All right, it's time. We're spring training bound. I can't wait to get out of the rain, get down to the sunshine, watch some spring training baseball. Probably most importantly though too, there's a lot of people we're just really looking forward to catching up with. So above all everything else, I can't wait for that. We do have some pretty cool ideas for people that we want to talk to and some short form content to go along with it. I don't want to promise everything we're going to be able to do because we're going to have to get it done first, but we're really looking forward to it and we can't wait to show you guys some of the stuff we've got in store. So what to do on a flight to the desert? Well, we have a podcast to edit. We recorded a couple before we left this week and one of them, the video got severely jumbled around. So I'm gonna spend the next couple hours doing that. Maybe I'll try to take a nap if I have some time, listen to some music, but that's about the gist of it. I think I'm gonna be doing a lot of editing on this flight. Welcome to remote podcasting. Look, usually it works perfectly fine, but every now and then you run into some issues like this. It just happened to be right before we're going to spring training, but we'll get it all fixed. And now I have a couple hours to sit down and do it. Phoenix, we made it. Man, that warm weather feels good. Well, that's the end of the travel day. We made it to Peoria. The stadium's somewhere behind me. Well, you can't see it. You'll just have to take my word for it. But we're here. Tomorrow morning, everything starts. Made it all safe. And like I keep saying, I can't stress it enough. Can't wait to get going. We're staying a couple different places throughout the week. First couple nights, we're staying in Peoria. It's a nice walking distance from the stadium. It's pretty short, so that'll be nice. And yeah, can't wait for tomorrow. All right day one of spring training for us. So one thing they don't really tell you about Phoenix if you're not from there is it does get cold in the mornings during the winter. I know, I know, it's Phoenix, it's the desert. Just take my word for it. As somebody who's lived here, as somebody who's been through it, yeah, it gets cold in the mornings. That's why I got a sweatshirt on and I gotta say, to anybody at Just Baseball that might be watching this, can't say I'm not a company, man. Anyway, let's go check in and get our morning started. It's an interesting day today. It's a split squad day, meaning everybody's playing, everybody's going to some location, but here in the morning, it's about 8.40 or so. But from where I'm standing, kind of got the minor league backfields. Another one behind me, if you can see it. There we go. So anyway, we'll see what big league guys we can talk to today. If not, there should be some minor league guys around. Looking forward to catching up with a bunch of people. But since there's a team meeting going on around the eight o'clock hour, there's not a bunch of guys out on the field doing anything yet. And it'll be a little interesting today with the split squad to see if guys are out on the field getting work in for a long time. But again, we're learning as we go. Now, some of you may be asking the same question that some of the players have asked me so far and some of the media members too. Where's TJ? Well, I've got some breaking news. I use my executive powers of this podcast to kick him off the show. No, I'm just kidding. I got here Monday night, he gets here Wednesday night, so we'll be here together Thursday through Sunday. So first couple days of the vlog, it's just me. All right, now there's batting practice going on. We just listened to Scott's service talk, couple of interesting updates. So Matt Brash getting on the mound to throw today as of Tuesday, that's good news. Gregory Santos is feeling healthy, that's good news. Those were the two big takeaways, but otherwise, pretty normal presser. Obviously, you don't need me to tell you how big to this bullpen Brash and Santos are. So to hear that those two guys are progressing, that is big time news. Okay, so game's gonna start in about a half hour here. We did talk to some guys today. We did some content with Tyler Locklear. We did some stuff with Cade Marlowe, so that was really cool. Even just sitting in the clubhouse though, we got to catch up with a bunch of guys, got to catch up with Taylor Trammell, got to catch up with a couple others. I'll tell you what though, I've got a public service announcement. Michael Chavis, oh my goodness, A plus dude. First off, he complimented my shirt, which shout out to him. But just sitting and talking to him, awesome dude. Man, I'm rooting for this guy to make the team now. If he does, he's gonna be a fan favorite. Lock that in. Michael Chavis, the ice horse. Part of it was getting our bearings today too, just figuring out where everything was, where everybody was, when things were happening. I'm sure we're gonna talk to a bunch more guys this week. In fact, I know we will. But in the meantime, we're gonna go over to the minor league side, to the minor league fields, see if we can talk to anybody over there and do some stuff. All 
All right, we just wrapped up some stuff with the minor league guys. We talked to Ty Pete, who continues to just be the best, by the way. His answers he gave us during those questions, just unreal. We talked to Cole Emerson too, really good dude. He was talking about he's been out in Arizona since about January, got out of the cold Ohio weather, down to the desert. The minor league scene's really cool because it's pretty laid back back there. There's not a ton of fans sitting around and watching. You can get a lot of the natural sounds of the game. Guys are just kind of talking it up. Pretty free flowing, pretty loose, pretty relaxed. So that part's pretty cool. I'm looking forward to getting back to those minor league fields the rest of the week talking to some other guys and just kind of standing around watching batting practice, watching some of the future Mariners. So really enjoyed that. Really enjoyed talking to both Colt and Ty too. So stay tuned for that stuff when we put it out on social media eventually. So that's another big takeaway. Big fan of the minor league setting. But big league game's gonna start here in a few minutes. Again, it's a split squad today. So half the guys are here. Half of them went out on the road for the other half of the split squad game. Logan Gilbert's pitching here in Peoria though. So I'm looking forward to that. So let's head back over to the main area and see what Walter's got in store today. All right, when you're in spring training, you gotta walk around the stadium a little bit. It's just so gorgeous out. Weather is perfect, vibes are high. So I figured let's take a walk around the ballpark. Let's go out to the berm. Let's walk around to the Mariners bullpen. We'll go a few different places. Okay, Logan Gilbert did not last long in today's game. He gave up a handful of runs. He didn't sound overly concerned about it when he talked afterward. He was just kind of saying how he didn't think anything was too far off. He just left a little bit too much in the middle of the plate. It was just a location thing, but again, I don't think he's sweating it. I'm certainly not sweating it. Spring training, like this stuff happens. I don't think anybody should be freaking out about anything at this point. I think Logan Gilbert is totally fine and he sounded like he said exactly that. Meanwhile, on the more positive side, saw both Mitches leave the yard. Garver ball was crushed. Hanniger hit a home run earlier in the game. Man, I'm excited for Mitch Hanniger. I know last year he was very injury riddled. His numbers weren't amazing. The short sample size he was in San Francisco because he only played about 60 games. Tell you what though, He's on the field. He's still got it. We're seeing it in spring training right now. I'm fired up for Mitch Hanniger and I'm fired up for Garver too. Kind of that same theory applies where if he stays on the field, I just talked about it on one of our last episode of the podcast. He can be maybe the most valuable hitter on the team, not named Julio if he just stays healthy. So I was happy to see those two guys go yard. Certainly got a reaction out of the crowd. How could it not? And oh, Julio went two for two with the walk. So that's always fun. And a couple other notes from this game. I guess final notes, Andres Munoz threw a scoreless inning. Oh, and our guy Gabe Spire threw a scoreless inning. We love to see that. We ran into a couple fans of the podcast too, so that was awesome. Shout out to Jim and Hillary. They live down in Oregon. They're down in Arizona for a few days. I met him at games last year during Seattle, but we ran into him again here in Arizona. So shout out to them. Well, first day is just about wrapped up. Game ended, Mariners ended up losing by one. Not that the result ultimately matters that much. It's spring training, but so we're walking back to the hotel now. Takeaways from the day? really fun once i got my bearings because i will say it does take you a little while to get acclimated on your first day because it's nice that everybody's in one spot right minor leaguers big leaguers coaching staff everybody that part's great but because there's so many fields and it's all spread out and you don't know exactly what time things are going to be at or where guys are going to be or where to set up that definitely took a little time today to get adjusted and all that Hopefully we can get even more guys tomorrow. We've got a bunch more questions we want to ask, a bunch more things we want to do. Also, tomorrow will be my final day on my own. Obviously I'm hyped for TJ to get here, but also it's going to make things that much easier. When you have two people here and you have somebody actually filming you, it'll make it that much easier because we can both do things together. We can track down players. We can record each other. It's going to be great. Obviously TJ is looking forward to getting down here. I'm looking forward to having him here, but day one of spring training, a lot of fun awesome to be in the sunshine so much fun to soak everything in i cannot wait for what we do the rest of the week and with that day two coming up tomorrow all right back for day two and little public service announcement wear sunscreen yeah i got burned pretty bad yesterday despite it only being like 73 74 degrees when i landed monday night i had a bunch of stuff i had to get done podcast wise so i said you know what it's not going to be that hot on tuesday i'll go one day without sunscreen it won't be the end of the world, right? Needless to say, last night I went to CVS to buy some sunscreen because I'm not making that mistake again. Anyway, day two today, TJ's traveling today. Let's see what we've got in store. All right, Scott Services media session wrapped up today. Couple of the takeaways, Matt Brash's first day back throwing, positive. So that is plus news for everybody. Gregory Santos is supposed to throw a bullpen this weekend. So again, 
Another plus, the only thing is opening day starting to get a little bit close. We'll see how those two dynamite arms progress in terms of being ready for opening day. Brash probably less likely than Santos, but the fact those guys are getting back out and throwing, especially Santos ramping it up now, that's good news. Also, Scott got asked a question about Lazaro Montez, and he said, look, how can you not see the comparison to Jordan Alvarez? So everybody sees the comps just when you look at the left-handed swing, the body, the power. So that's pretty exciting. He also said he was pretty impressed with how Montez fared in the big league game yesterday. He also said he was pretty impressed about how Montez fared in the big league game yesterday. He got two at bats, he walked, he struck out once, but he worked the count in that strikeout, swung at the right pitches. So pretty cool stuff. Cool that Lazaro got to get out in a big league game and cool that Scott really noticed it. All right, let's go try to talk to some players. All right, big league stuff just wrapped up. We talked to JP today. We talked to Mitch Hanniger today. That was pretty cool. I hear Hanniger a lot of the times pretty tough to track down because the guy has such a set routine and is always laser focused as we all know. So cool to track him down. Really nice dude. We asked those guys how well they remembered their rookie year teammates back when JP was in Philly and Mitch was in Arizona. So that was kind of fun. You guys should check that out when we eventually post it. But now we're gonna head back over to the minor league side, which again, yesterday I really enjoyed. So I'm gonna go take some of that in and we'll see if there's anybody over there to talk to. All right, wrapped up on the minor league side. We did some stuff with Johnny Farmello, who's awesome. That friendly rivalry between him and Ty Pete is on. Johnny thinks he has more power than Ty. Ty thinks he has more power than Johnny. I love it. I hope it keeps going throughout their time in the minors. We also chopped it up with Lazaro Montez a little bit, who we've talked to in the past. He is so much fun. Oh, he's got a ton of energy, everything. This is why it's fun to go over to those minor league fields. You can just kind of hang out, talk to some guys, watch some of the future Mariners get their work in. It's fun. Johnny can really track some balls down too. Even before we talked to him, he was just shagging balls in center field and even just watching them kind of jog baseballs down in the gaps. That dude covers ground, so I cannot wait to see him in his first full minor league year this year and see him tear it up there. All right, day two at the fields basically wrapped up. The biggest news we found out today, this one breaks my heart. Like, it really, really breaks my heart. Harry Ford is not a Star Wars fan. So we had this idea for him, if he was a Star Wars fan, where we do a game of finish the Han Solo line with us. For example, we throw out a line of hokey religions and ancient weapons are no match for and then let him try and finish the line. But he's not a Star Wars fan, so he can't answer trivia questions based on his namesake of Harrison Ford. Oh, that one's just a heartbreaker. Just a heartbreaker. He is a Harry Potter fan though, so we're also Harry Potter fans. We can think of some Harry Potter trivia for him. We'll see if we do that later in the week. That's still a good silver medal, but heartbreaker that he's not a Star Wars fan. Other takeaways from today, again, I know I talked about it a little bit earlier. I really like talking to Johnny Farmello. Really good dude. Different than Ty Pete, but those two complement each other very well. You can tell why those guys are friends. Oh, I totally forgot to mention this earlier too, but Johnny Farmello, confirmed Marine Layer Pod fan, so that's pretty cool. Is that a reason I like him even just a little bit more? Maybe. But no, genuinely, really, really awesome dude. I also stopped to talk to Ty Adcock for a little bit about playing ping pong because I have seen him over the last two days now in the clubhouse very often playing ping pong. And he was saying, eh, I think I'm pretty good. And I was telling him, yeah, I think I'm pretty good. So I said, maybe one day if we ever find a table, two of us can play sometime. Ty was also saying the other guys in the clubhouse that are really good at ping pong, the two that stand out to him, he said, are both George Kirby and Emerson Hancock. So do with that information what you will. Oh, and final thing, this is going back to the whole sunscreen thing this morning. I walk into the media room today, Ryan Divish looks right at me and he says, Lyle, there's this really awesome thing called sunscreen. I'm like, I know there's this awesome thing called sunscreen. I forgot it yesterday. <sighs> I am usually the biggest proponent of wearing sunscreen. And yes, I forgot. But anyway, our day ended pretty early today since the team's on the road out in Surprise. It's about 1.30. I'm gonna go grab some lunch, start editing some stuff from over the last couple days and basically wait for TJ to show up because he's getting here tonight. It's time to go okay we're here at pdx two hours till the flight takes off we're ready to go calm before the storm all alone at the gate it is one 30 in the morning and look who i found you have way too much energy at this time of day but you know what we're doing at this time in what in five hours we're gonna be at the no 
six hours we're gonna be at the field that's if what we're gonna be doing if you want to know why tj showed up at 1 30 in the morning and his crazy travel day you can tune into the next vlog to find out we'll talk to you tomorrow at spring training